Kids on the wharf skipping rocks in the sea The people are friendly and the children are free Yeah, our little town is just heaven to me This is our town, our little town This is our town, our little town One day it's up, the next day it's down This is Welcome to this week in review. Tonight's stories include Burgio Academy's Drama Club Perform Well, Janeway Fundraiser, Earth Day was Saturday, April the 22nd. These stories plus the BBS Playbill, Off the Rack, and more coming up after this. It took billions of years, but it was perfect. New life coming from the old. Part of it hot, part of it frozen. A constantly moving blend of atmospheric elements kept the thermostat perfect to support the delicate balance. It has been called a miracle. And when you see how perfectly everything works together, you realize that it is. But today, the earth is warming. If it continues, what quenched our thirst will flood the land. What filled our plates will turn to dust. Nature is not doing this. We are. Nature cannot stop it. We can. But we have to start now. The Burgio Academy Drama Club performed their play the way it is at the annual drama festival. The play was performed at Burgio Academy on April the 5th for the community. The team traveled to St. George's on April the 7th to take part in the drama festival. The festival was held over a two-day period. There were at least five to six other plays as competition for the Burgio Academy Drama Club. In the end, they performed very well. The club won the Best Ensemble and Rebecca Young won Best Actress. Congratulations to the Burgio Academy Drama Club on a great performance and once again representing our community very well. The bank staff are continuing in their efforts to raise funds for the Jane Way Children's Hospital. Fundraising for the Jane Way is an ongoing effort for the bank staff. The staff at the bank are great contributors of the Janeway Children's Hospital. Their ongoing fundraisers include chocolate bars and the Janeway balloons. Every year they try to do something special. They usually have an Easter draw 
However, this year they were not prepared and decided to go with the Mother's Day draw instead. This is a wonderful prize. They have filled a wicker basket with lots of items a mother would enjoy. They have included a bath towel, face cloth, lotions, candle, toothpaste, toothbrush, soap, foot brush, bath beads, chocolates, slippers, facial cleaning pads, and shampoo. It is valued at, at approximately $100. Tickets cost $1 each or three for $2 and are available from any staff member at the bank. The draw date is set for Friday, April the 12th. If you haven't purchased a ticket yet, get one soon. This will be a fantastic prize to win for your mom or anyone that deserves to be recognized as a caregiver in your life. Earth Day was Saturday, April the 22nd. Earth Day Canada is a natural environmental communications organization mandated to improve the state of the environment by empowering Canadians to achieve local solutions. Since 1991, Earth Day Canada has been coordinating Earth Day events. More than 6 million Canadians take part in events and projects to address local environmental issues. In Canada, Earth Day has grown into Earth Week and even Earth Month to accommodate the profusion of events and projects. This year, Berger will be taking part in Earth Day activities. However, it will be sch scheduled for May to coincide with the town's cleanup. This was due to the Easter break and many felt there wasn't sufficient time to prepare for the Earth Day event. Councillor June Iscott will be helping to organize some cleanup events with the help of the Burgio Academy and other groups around town. A proposal has been presented to the town for their support and we can expect to hear more about Earth Day events within the next few weeks. Stay tuned for more of this week in review coming up after this. What if your family lived in a home on an island you couldn't leave? With limited amounts of food and safe drinking water. It would be very important to make things last, wouldn't it? Especially if your family kept growing and growing and growing. Well, it doesn't matter where your home is, because we all live on an island we can't leave. So please, use only what you need, because supplies truly are limited. We can do that. Volunteer Appreciation Week is from April the 23rd to the 29th. For just a minute, think about all the groups and organizations around town. How many can you think of that are very active in volunteer work? Begin at the school. There's the school snack program, sports coaches, school board members, public library board members, story hour volunteers, sea cadets, and Burjo Bears. Now move out into the community. We have the Guarding Movement, BBS Volunteers, Calder Health Care Center Volunteers, Gift Shop Volunteers, and Trailblazers. Let's not forget the Sand and Sea Committee, the Recreation Committee, Lions, Lioness, Virgil Fire Department, Ground Search and Rescue, Church Vistries and Boards, Sunday School Teachers, ACW, Alter Gill, UCW and the largest. All these groups volunteer a minimum of one hour per week for 52 weeks. It comes out to be a quite a number of unpaid hours of work for this town. We all know that volunteering takes more than one hour per week. As you can see, without all these wonderful volunteers, lots of work in our community would not get done. Our BBS volunteers, for example, are a very important part of running the community channel. These 13 young people are willing to help wherever and whenever they can. If you are in a position to show your appreciation to a volunteer, please consider doing so. We need to and should take this opportunity to show our volunteers just how valuable they are to our community. If you don't volunteer now, think about offering your time to some worthwhile group or organization. 
I guarantee you won't regret it. On behalf of those who work with volunteers, I thank all of our community volunteers for all your work, dedication, and commitment to our town and its people. As the 2006 Volunteer Appreciation Week theme states, volunteers make a difference every day. The feature of the week from the Information Resource Office is all about travel. The Information Resource Center has lots of helpful information on this topic. There, these are mostly booklets. In the Bon, bon Voyage But booklet, you will find information on international travel insurance, traveler's checklist, drugs and travel, travel and health risk, and register with us foreign affairs. Her Own Way is a booklet for women travelers. There is Retirement Abroad, Drugs and Traveling Don't Mix, and Dual Citizenship. A very interesting booklet is one called A Guide for Canadians in Prison Abroad. This booklet tells you some things you should not do while traveling abroad. There are an assortment of pamphlets, tips for traveling, packing right, packing a briefcase, what can I bring into Canada, and more. If you are planning a trip abroad, drop by the Information Resource Center Monday to Friday from 1 to 4.30 p.m. and take a look at all the information available. You can also contact Siobhan at 886-1600. We have with us in our studio today uh, Mayor George Reed. Mr. Reed, I understand that you had a council report on Wednesday. Would you like to uh, give us a report from that meeting? Sure. Good evening, Marie. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, it's, uh, it's good to be back. I think uh, there is no place, at least no place in Canada as good as Virgil. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, uh, it's really uh, relieved to be back in uh, Virgil again. Yeah, we had a meeting on Wednesday night, and there were a number of things that came up. And uh, the water treatment uh, report as uh, phase one has been done, and uh, we're going into uh, phase two now. And of course, uh, this uh, water treatment plant, uh, the consequences of this, of course, could end up in in court. There could be court action on it. So I really can't say uh, that much on it, except to say that uh, the lawyers are still working on, or, or about to start to work on, uh, on phase two of it. The uh, website uh, for Burjo is, uh, is uh, ongoing, and I think it's just about finished. And, uh, and if you want to have a look at it, uh, Marie or anyone else that want to have a look at it, it would, uh, the uh, call-up would be www.burjo.nl.com. Dot com. So that's if you want to go on to uh, the Berger website and see what you think of it. Now the the uh, nat National Marine Conservation uh, Area that's that uh, we've been proposing for the Berger, Ramia, Gray River, Franceway area. Uh, that proposal has been into the federal government for. I guess it's going on two years now. Uh, that's been sent to new people in this new government, and uh, we're still hoping that a decision will be made that in, made on that in the near future. It's uh, been another long, drawn out affair. Uh, when you're dealing with government, it seems like to me nothing is uh, nothing happens fast. And I think, as you've heard before uh, from other sources, is that the uh, driver driver examiner has been reinstated for the Burge area, and I think that's for once a month. And uh, that was due to the effort of the pressure, basically, that was put on the provincial government uh, by the uh, last uh, council, uh, particularly uh, Mayor Ann. And, uh, of course, that pressure was kept up by the present council, and uh, they decided that in their wisdom that it would be the best thing to do was to put that driver examiner back into Virgil. When it's going to start, we really don't know. Uh, 
they say it during the planning stages of, of uh, getting it set up. And when it does start, it will be doing all the things that uh, it was doing before. On March the 20th and the 23rd, uh, Blaine and, uh, and Clayt were in Gander. They were in there uh, doing some uh, training on uh, clean and safe uh, water drinking. So that was a, a great seminar for these two uh, people. Uh, council have also been talking to uh, the provincial parks, and we're trying to get some extra campsites uh, in the park. We try, we wanted to get them done up for this year, but uh, they seem to have a three-year program that they're talking about, and uh, hopefully within the next three years that they will have some campsites uh, put in the, in the provincial park here. They promised us that they would be, so that's an ongoing thing. There were f permits issued were, uh, for five sheds to be constructed in Birdsville over the next little while. And uh, having said that, uh, I've got to remind people that whenever you do any renovations on your house or whenever you're going to build a shed or repair your bridge, uh, any of these things need a permit. So before you can uh, start it, you actually got to come down to council and, and pick up a permit to, uh, and, you know, to, which allows you to do that work. If not, you'll see uh, Mr. Marks coming after you. <laughs> uh, council is in the process uh, of uh, spring cleanup, and I think May the 15th to the 27th have been uh, declared the two weeks, and I'll have a little bit more to say that after the next council meeting. But I think uh, on Channel 10 now, there's a statement from uh, Councillor Escott mm -hmm. uh, concerning a uh, special cleanup event. So I, I would encourage people to uh, read that on Channel 10, and uh, if they're actually interested in it, they should uh, contact Councillor Escott to, uh, you know, to get involved in it. Yes. Because this town is, uh, I must say, uh, Looking around town, it, it is very clean, you know, very clean, and uh, or I consider it to be very clean. Uh, I've seen much worse, but uh, like everything, you know, improvement can be made in a number of areas. And uh, people are taking great pride in uh, in their properties in that now, and, and I think just a little extra effort that uh, it probably could be one of the cleanest towns in this province. Uh, the other thing, the audited financial statements have been um, completed, and they uh, they will be sent to government. I think they have to be in by the end of June. But uh, town seems to be in a very good financial position. We're not overflowing the money, and, but nevertheless, we're not in debt either. We're, in, we're on a pretty uh, level keel, so that's a that's a good thing to be able to say in uh, in this day and age with. Uh, you know, with the, the fact that we've lost our plant and, and, and so on and so forth. So we're, we're in very good shape. The town has uh, also uh, talked to the Department of Highways uh, to see what they can do about some of the condition on the Burjo uh, Road. Uh, since the department, of course, is in, they're in their spring cleanup too and uh, repairs. We hope that uh, that they will put the Virgil Road back into top-notch shape. And there's also ongoing um, there's an ongoing study by government to uh, look into the ferry terminal that's being requested for uh, out by the government wharf, you know, to take care of the uh, ferries that are traveling from Virgil to the other communities. So that's an ongoing study, and they, they told us to get back as soon as possible to, with their recommendation, what they're going to do about it. And I think that's about it for the news, uh, the, Marie. Uh, the council report. Council report. Um, mm. Well, uh, we welcome you back from your winter at WIS. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, 
I'd like to ask you a few questions about your experience out there now, if you don't mind. Sure, go ahead. So, was it a good experience? Uh, well, yes, uh, it was. Uh, it was worthwhile. It was worthwhile, and it was an eye opener, you know. And uh, I think probably whatever I say uh, about out there has probably been already said in Virgil, because uh, my understanding this year there was probably about 200 or more people from Virgil working on the different seismic companies. And there's a lot of companies there, probably uh, six, seven, or eight different companies that, that you could have went to work for. The company that, uh, that I was with was uh, Veritas, and I believe overall we had about 40 people probably working on uh, working with that uh, with that company from Virgil. Uh, the work is the if you get involved in all of the work, there are all different aspects of the the seismic work is um, it is very it's labor intensive very labor intensive and it's fairly physical you uh, you're carrying anywhere between uh, 60 to 70 pounds uh, maximum when you're carrying uh, loads of stuff mm -hmm. if you're doing that type of a job you know like uh, you know the cords that you use for your uh, for your Electric lawnmower, that type of thing, you know, except a little bigger cord than that. You know, you you usually have about five of these, you know, caught up around your neck, which was about 60 pounds, I suppose. So you, you're walking off with your neck bent down, so to do that for 12 hours, you soon, um, soon uh, is very tiring. In your hands, you're probably carrying 60 pounds. Sometimes, you know, minimum probably 60 to 70 pounds in your oh. in, in your hands, 30, 35 pounds in each hand. <coughs> and you carry that. It's not like, say, you take 10 or 15 feet, but you carry that probably a uh, oh, quarter kilometer, you know. Then you pick up some more and carry it. You know, you keep walking, losing it as you go, but, you know, you still start, start off with 60, 70 pounds. So it's very, it's very, you know. Physical. Very physical, and I think that's why people lose, uh, lose all the weight they lose, you know. Uh, when they get out there and get at it. No, like every job, there and there's easier aspects to it. Okay. There are some parts of the seismic that, that you do that's not not as labor intensive. And uh, but whatever job you do, it's uh, it's very time time intensive. You work probably anywhere between 12 to 14 hours every day. Okay. And I mean Saturdays, Sundays, and company that I was working with, you worked 28 days. That was a normal, you worked 28 days straight, and then you'd have two days off. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, was it what you expected? Well, yes, to a point, to a point, because I was talking to, uh, you know, a lot of other people about it before I went out there. You know, so, you, so, so you actually carried the cable in that? Oh, it, you know, did, yeah. did all, yeah. I got involved in all the work, you okay. know, all the different types of work. So what surprised you the most about it? Well, I guess it would be it would be the long hours uh, for the long period of time without without a break, and uh, you know it was uh, you know it was probably a little bit more. It, it put me in mind of probably uh, like uh, the intensity that would be like mixing cement probably for a full day every day. Okay. You yeah. know, so if you really yeah. if you really got into the phys <laughs> physical part of it, but. Uh, there, you know, the, you know, there's good parts about it. There's a little easier parts about it, but uh, I would say, time-wise, I was gone for three months, and if I had been working on a, say, eight-hour day, uh, forty hours a week, the three months that I was gone would have would amounted to be about pretty near seven months of regular oh, okay. work, eight hours a day, of, you know, five days a week. That's time-wise. And the distance you walk, I figured it up, you know. Uh, I would say I walked between, say, Bird to the St. John's. That would be the distance that I walked while I was gone. Wow. That's a lot of walk. Yeah. Well, so that's one of the reasons why people, you know. Mm -hmm. no, I, didn't lose a, I didn't lose very much weight <laughs> because uh, the last uh, month I was there, I got the opportunity to go, uh, go north. And... Up north, it's a, it's a little different ball game altogether. You, you're not carrying the same kind of weight 
uh, you're, you're riding around more in a vehicle for probably a quarter to a third of the day and you you walk a bit and then you get aboard a vehicle and uh, get a warm up and then you get out and you and you work again then you get aboard a vehicle and warm up so it it's less less uh, labor intensive very very cold of course uh, but uh, not as not as heavy physically you know? okay that's what i was going to ask like compared to the weather that you're used to here like what was it like out there <clears throat> excuse me right in the deepest part of the winter was the temperatures well, really, uh, it was, really different? Yeah, it was cold. Well, you know, most of the temperatures, uh, well, well, since I was in two areas, there was, you know, two different, uh, two different types of temperature. In the Alberta area, it was uh, fairly cold between minus 12, well, I guess probably minus 8, and up to about a minus 30. And, uh, but there was no wind. Every day the did count, just about. Just about every day it did count. Blue skies, but cold. Just so you know, it's like you're in a walk-in freezer, you know, where okay. there's no wind blowing on you, but you know, but it's so cold, and you wonder where, where it's coming from. Because usually here, the, the coldness comes from the wind. wind. But up there, where there's no wind, and you still get cold, and you wonder, you know, it comes so cold and everything, but because there's another draft. And up north, basically the same thing, except temperatures are colder. So the lowest we had was a minus 40, uh, 47. And you, you know, still, but you were bundled up. Everything had to be basically uh, nothing exposed. And uh, but since there was no wind again, most of you know, I'd say ninety percent of the time there was absolutely no wind. And so you, you know, the wind chill factor wasn't there. Wasn't so it? whatever the temperature was, <coughs> yeah. was I think, you know. But still, like you're talking the mo minus forty-seven. That's like that's more than a little bit nippy. Oh yes, that's like, yeah. Yeah. Getting on the other side of severe. Yeah, um, and there's uh, very little snow. Like uh, well, most people think in the heart, it can be a lot of snow, yes. but there was only the snow was about a foot deep. But the, the snow was very, very hard and very, very dry. Okay. You know, it's not like our snow that's uh, got a lot of moisture into it. Now. So that was an experience. Uh, Did you experience. enjoy the experience? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I enjoyed it. But uh, after a week in each place, uh, I had, you know, seen enough, learned enough. That I think that the rest of it just became a routine. Routine. You know? yeah. Would you Would you consider going back again? I would say if you're one day over sixty-two, don't go up. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm more than one day over sixty-two now, so I won't be going back. Now it's. Uh, well, I, of all the people that I met there, you know, actually working at, I was probably the oldest one that I that I know of there. But uh, that don't mean there weren't anyone there older than that. But uh, I think it's a young, it's basically a young, young people's job. Or you got to be in physically good shape. They one time they, they you didn't take anyone less than 18 years or older than 35. Mm -hmm. So you had to be between 18 and 35. But the, the labor laws have changed, so now basically they'll take anybody. Mm -hmm. And one time, if you weren't, uh, you know, if they looked at you and didn't think you were in shape, they, they wouldn't hire you. That's right. But since the labor laws have changed, they've done away with that. And they're very, right now, they're very accommodating. You know, you go there, and what you got to do, you got to pass a, a urine test, you know, for, for drugs, and um, then you fill out your papers. And I don't know if all companies work like that, but the company that I work with, just all you had to do, and then you, they simply put you to work. And it was basically up to you and the crew that you were working with. And, uh, you know, if you couldn't get along, then of course you quit, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Now, the company didn't make you quit or nothing like that. There was no, there was no expectation put on you as, a, as an individual. You just simply worked, did your best. And I gotta say that, uh, I would say 90% of the people up there uh, in the employees that I saw came from the East Coast, from uh, PEI, New Brunswick, um, Nova Scotia, and Newfoundland. And out of these, I think most of them were from Newfoundland. Wow. Yeah. What about the female population now? I know there were some, uh, our ladies from Virgil went out to Seismic and did different things. Did you happen to uh, get, uh, get a lot of women in, in the company or the areas that you work? No, uh, no women were were welcome there. You know, there, uh, there was no discrimination like that. And uh, but 
uh, out, of, out of the people that I worked with, that I was on four different jobs, and out of these four different jobs, there were uh, probably uh, six, I think, but maximum yeah. six, six women. And uh, yeah, and they, they they worked well. They, they fitted in, you know. Because there was, uh, you know, some of them uh, well, as good as any any man yeah. on the job, you know. Really, I mean, uh, just do all the physical work, and they're really involved. There's, but you know, for some reason, or not, there was no large numbers there. Yeah. Now up north, uh, on the job we were on north, there was no one, no. Um, no women working on on the line part. There were a lot of women working uh, doing the other work in the okay. office and that stuff. Yeah. But uh, but down south they were out on the line doing. They were uh, they were you know riding the bikes, uh, doing uh, doing, uh, doing the firing the dynamite and that, and they were uh, you know carrying the equipment. Yeah. So there's no discrimination if you're uh, if you're, you if you're a lady and you want to go up there and you feel like you can do it, you can do it. It's just just a lot of hard work, yeah. but some of them are quite capable doing it. And of course, uh, I've seen I've seen women do doing work that the the, the men uh, some some fellows. I mean, I'd have young fellows too would try it, and within two or three days they were gone. Mm -hmm. They couldn't take it, so they, yeah. they they just left. So it depends on the individual, obviously. Depends on the individual, yeah. and, you know. Mm -hmm. Radio, you know what you think you can take, and. Uh, so a lot, you know, there's a bit, there's a fair turnover in on the, you know, among the employees there, and I think there's more turnover during the summertime when the when they go out into the mountainous yeah. areas. Now the mountainous areas, they tell me, is a, was even harder than what we did. Yeah. You know, it's a, a little bit more intensive. Uh, you know, climbing up the uh, steep slopes of the mountains on one side, and, you know, carrying the load that I'm talking about, 60, 70 pounds. Now besides the load that you carried belonged to the company, you also had to carry a pack sack uh, belonging to yourself with uh, 15 or 25 pounds in, you know. So, wow. So yeah, yeah. Was, you know. Nice little bit of weight involved. Yeah, but the purge of people, I, I, got, I got to mention this now because uh, all the, the bosses that I, that I talked to, the, the purge of people has, has a great reputation, you know. They, they're sought after pretty, uh, pretty much. Yeah. So if you're from Virgil, you, you know, you've got, you got uh, no problems at all getting get a job. Get a job. Yeah, you know, they're well, well respected, you know, praised up, and uh, taken back as, as soon as they want to go back. Yeah, so, amazing. Uh, oh yeah, it just says that uh, the people that we have here that go there, uh, they give their all and uh, and they do a good job. And they're very reliable. Excellent, excellent yeah. job. I was working with. Uh, Doug Pink and uh, and, uh, and uh, Sims uh, uh, for a month, you know, and I was working with uh, Wayne uh, Krant for another two weeks, I think, and I was working with uh, other guys from Perch like Angus Closier, you know, mm -hmm. Trevor Reggett and Trent Reggett and. Alan Anderson, they were up in the area where I was working up north. So, uh, you know, the, the opinion of uh, their their bosses were very high, very high opinion. But obviously the trip at West and the seismic work gave you a great appreciation for Bergio. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I would, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I got no intention of leaving it. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, and uh, well, I, I wish the other people didn't have to go either. Personally, I think True. that's probably the uh, it's probably the downside. Of course, that you got to be away from your family for uh, you know three to four months every year. Yeah, that, that is certainly a downside. Well, you know, and then, uh, right now, of course, there's nothing that you can, that we can do about it here in Virgil. It's unfortunate the uh, industry is not here to um, take care of these uh, these people who can work so well and uh, so appreciated in other places, you know. And my understanding is, of course, that that was like that in every company. I believe Trace, I believe, uh, where Max Dunford, I think, was working. Uh, that company, I think, had 47 out of, uh, out of 100 and something from Virgil. And I, I think Tessa, another big company that uh, Hive and, and uh, Hina Leishman were working with. They had a large complement of uh, Virgil people. people yeah. Yeah. 
and so every one of the comp out. yeah, every one of the companies, you know, one I'm packing in. Yeah. 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 Wonderful. Anyway, thanks for sharing your experience with us. Oh yeah, no, I guess so. <laughs> no problem. I, you know, there's other people, you know, uh, that uh, probably would like something to say. You know, like Joe. I don't know if you talked to Joe. No, I haven't spoke to Joe, but uh, or, that can or, be arranged. Or, or Doug. Or, yeah, we can you know, we can arrange that. Anybody who uh, who's interested yeah, in Mike coming Ang in. Mike Ingram, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Pat Strickland, yeah. all these guys. All those guys. Yeah, they got good urine to tell yeah. you. Well, I'll tell them George told me to call you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> First little help. <laughs> okay, Marie. They're with us for Off the Wreck and the BBS Playbill, all after this. Off the rack. This week, as we scanned our tape rack, we came across a tape of when the Chamber of Commerce organized a demonstration on the plant closure. Let's look back to April the 27th, 1997. They had an option, a choice to stay or to go. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are forced to leave our homes. By the federal government, we have no choice. Remember the 60s and the 70s? Most of us here today are a result of Joey Small's resettlement. When Joey Small would sit to the poor people, fill up their boats, burn your stages and wharves, and resettle to other towns. Ladies and gentlemen, we are being forced to resettle again. After the speeches, everyone proceeded to hold hands and proceed around our community. Then, a human chain was formed around the circle near the hospital to show that residents of Burgio are not individuals, but a family. A family determined to stick together. A community determined to survive. And I'll be here again next week with This Week in Review. For This Week in Review, I'm Marie Rose. Good night and God bless.